I'm just glad I have a woman like you that has been able to understand the suffering and pain she brought upon me. It's much easier when you don't have to walk that road alone. 12.23 a.m. Gail, I feel bad that from 1996 to 1999, I replaced you with Franco Nero. That must have devastated you. 12.24 a.m. Gail, however, Franco is a good man, so that must have helped. 12.25 a.m. Gail, but it didn't help that Lori tried to do to him what she did to you in December 1996. I'm sure she terribly humiliated you at that time. 12.26 a.m. Gail, Brent, are you okay? Awful quiet. 12.27 a.m. Brent Spiner, I'm just listening and reflecting a little. 12.27 a.m. Brent Spiner, Franco was certainly a good man. I liked him as a friend and had no problems with you going to him. I bet he took care of you really well. 12.28 a.m. Gail, I'm really happy for him with Vanessa Redgrave. I've always liked her. 12.29 a.m. Brent Spiner, she's very lucky to have him. 12.29 a.m. Brent Spiner, I'm even luckier to have you. 12.30 a.m. Gail, oh, thank you, Brent. But you heard all my conversation with Franco. And when I took you back as a lover in 1999, I think he was just swell about it. Such a big person, just like you. 12.31 a.m. Gail, actually, you are the one who introduced me to him on the phone. Why did you do that? 12.31 a.m. Brent Spiner, well, he was my friend, and I thought you would like to meet him. 12.32 a.m. Gail, really? You didn't think he'd like to meet me? 12.32 a.m. Brent Spiner, of course I thought he would like to meet you, too. 12.32 a.m. Brent Spiner, I thought the two of you would get along excellently. 12.34 a.m. Gail, we did, actually. But when I learned the true nature of Lori, I took you back in a heartbeat and felt very bad for not dreaming about you as a lover when I found out about her. By the way, why did you increase your television appearances in the summer of 1996 when I was crying my eyes out about Lori? Was she threatening my life? 12.34 a.m. Gail, I mean, you made a TV appearance and boasted about her as your girlfriend and her two dogs. 12.36 a.m. Brent Spiner, yes, she was. That's another part of the story I want to explain in more detail. Right now, I feel it's best we focus on the first parts, as far as the script goes, or we'd get way ahead of ourselves. She was threatening to kill you if I didn't go along with her as being my fake girlfriend. 12.36 a.m. Gail, I see. You don't want to talk about this right now? 12.37 a.m. Brent Spiner, oh no, that's quite all right if you have questions. 12.38 a.m. Gail, I understand that you want to tell this story thoroughly and correctly. It's very complicated because Jesuits are complicated. How did you finally get Lori out of the studio? Also, when LeVar told you to tell me, was it on the phone? And if so, where were you when you called him? I'm sure you wanted to be away from Lori. 12.39 a.m. Brent Spiner, yes, I had to leave the studio, so I called him on the phone before I got into work one day. 12.39 a.m. Brent Spiner. So that part in your script was actually very accurate. 12.40 a.m. Gail. Wow. I just guessed about it being in your car because if I was in your shoes, that's what I would have done. So it was in your car you talked to LeVar. 12.40 a.m. Brent Spiner. Yes, and I was pretty adamant at that point about not telling anyone else, including you. I just thought maybe LeVar could help me in some way by speaking up for me at the studio, but that didn't work. He wound up helping me get rid of Lori in the end, though. 12.41 a.m. Brent Spiner. I had gone to Paramount Studios headquarters to tell them about what was happening, and that's when they laid it out for me that I was not to say a word to anyone or I would be fired and painted as a rapist in the media. 12.42 a.m. Brent Spiner. So I came back to the studio later to tell LeVar, and lo and behold, I ran right back into Lori McBride. She was standing outside my studio room door with her hands behind her back, holding a syringe full of drugs, grinning at me. 12.43 a.m. Brent Spiner. I stepped backward in fright, and she lunged, plunging the syringe into my neck, then throwing me into the room. I struggled fiercely, and so she hit me over the head with a frying pan, sending me stumbling into the bed. Then she tied me down with ropes, spread eagle. 12.43 a.m. Brent Spiner. I was horrified as she began to undress, and that's when I saw the door creak open again.
12.44 a.m., Brent Spiner, it was LeVar, and he held his finger to his lips to shush me so I wouldn't give away that he was behind her. Laurie didn't see him. 12.44 a.m., Brent Spiner, Laurie was too busy looking at me, licking her chops. The last thing I remember is her slowly removing her top, and a split second later, LeVar rushed into the room, but I had passed out unconscious. 12.45 a.m., Brent Spiner, when I awoke, I was still tied to the bed, but Laurie and LeVar were gone. All I saw was blood everywhere. I was shocked. All I knew was that I had to get out of there. 12.46 a.m., Brent Spiner. I struggled and bit at the ropes until I could free myself and then got up. There was a pool of blood leading from the bed to my door and all the way out into the hallway. 12.46 a.m., Brent Spiner. I followed the blood all the way outside to the far back of the studio, fearing the worst. 12.47 a.m., Brent Spiner. That was where I found LeVar facing the dumpster. I trotted up beside him and asked what had happened, but he didn't have to answer me. I looked into the dumpster and saw Lori McBride. He had killed her! 12.47 a.m., LeVar Burton. This is between you, me, and this gallon of gasoline, he said. 12.48 a.m., Brent Spiner. Then he lit a match to light up a cigarette, offering me one. I refused, of course, shaking my head. Then he threw the match into the dumpster, and it caught on fire, consuming her body. 12.48 a.m., Brent Spiner. He put his arm around my shoulder, and we stood there, admiring the flames for a moment. 12.49 a.m., Brent Spiner. As the night went on, we decided to camp out and wait until the blaze finished and we roasted marshmallows and sang a few songs while passing around some beer. It helped lift my spirits. 12.50 a.m., Brent Spiner. After that, I figured everything would be all right. LeVar told me to just focus on you and try to put this behind me, so for a while, I did. 12.50 a.m., Gail. So that's why you were so happy on the Joan Rivers show in November 1992. 12.51 a.m., Brent Spiner. Yes, I thought I had finally disposed of that devil and she would never come back. 12.51 a.m., Brent Spiner. And I decided that the best thing to do would be to turn all of my negative energy into positive energy and just focus on you. To be honest, I think for a short time I blocked all of that out. 12.51 a.m., Gail. So how did Lori return? 12.52 a.m., Brent Spiner. I'm not sure. It terrified me for certain. 12.52 a.m., Brent Spiner. I'm pretty sure she was already being cloned. 12.52 a.m., Gail. It was obviously a clone. Did you believe in clones back then? 12.52 a.m., Brent Spiner. No, I didn't. So it was very spooky to me. I felt like she was capable of anything. So when she made threats on your life, I didn't question her. 12.52 a.m., Brent Spiner. It was like she was the devil. 12.53 a.m., Gail. Actually, I believe all the Lorees are demon-possessed. I'm just curious, are there any good Lori clones? Sometimes some clones are not as bad as others. 12.54 a.m., Brent Spiner. If there are good clones of her, I haven't met one yet. I can assure you that. 12.54 a.m., Gail. When did she return? 12.54 a.m., Brent Spiner created a group conversation with Terrance Jenkins. Show group conversation. 12.54 a.m., Brent Spiner. It was a little while after the Joan Rivers show. 12.54 a.m., Gail. Oh, dear. Can you give me an exact date? 12.55 a.m., Brent Spiner. I'll have to think about it. I'm not very good with dates. 12.55 a.m., Gail. Or an exact month? 12.55 a.m., Gail. How did she return? 12.56 a.m., Brent Spiner. She returned one day pretending she was already my girlfriend, which I thought was just part of her game with me. But little did I know how far that game was going to go. 12.57 a.m., Brent Spiner. I guess she decided to step it up after the last plot failed. 12.57 a.m., Brent Spiner. She just met me outside the studio one evening, and I swear I almost thought she was a ghost. She had died. LeVar killed her. 12.57 a.m., Brent Spiner. She followed me to my car. Then when I drove away, she followed me to my home and continued to stalk me. 12.59 a.m., Brent Spiner. One day, my bosses at Paramount said it was time for me to make some public appearances with my new girlfriend. I knew long before then that they were already in on it. 
because of when I told them about my rape initially. And from there on out, it was a nightmare come to life. 1 a.m. Brent Spiner. I told Lori straight up that she would not be my girlfriend, but that was when she warned me that she would kill you if I didn't go along with her plans. I felt, because I didn't believe in clones, I had just watched this woman come back from the dead, and I had experienced such a horrific rape by her prior that I thought she could do exactly as she wanted, and I decided I would sacrifice myself to save you. 101 AM Gail, Terrance is talking to me. Let me read your writing now. 101 AM Brent Spiner, we can try to join up so we can all converse together and it's not so confusing. 102 AM Gail, yeah, I think he's trying to do that. I just read what you wrote about Lori. Everything is starting to make sense now. I'm just curious. Were you concerned about how I would react when and if I found out about Lori? 104 AM Brent Spiner, a little. I still wasn't ready to tell you about the rape, and I knew that my being seen with her would be confusing and devastating to you. 105 AM Brent Spiner, but by that point, she was already injected into my life, and I couldn't get away to tell you. I was afraid that she was wiretapping my phone for a while. 105 AM Brent Spiner. I don't know if she was, but it made me very cautious because she told me that if I even told you about what she was doing, she would kill you. 106 AM Brent Spiner. So I think she was waiting to see if I would say anything. She already knew that I called you at times. So I had to change up when and where I called you in an attempt to throw her off guard and make her think that I had stopped trying to talk to you. 107 AM Gale. Terrance got shot in the leg. He might need to go to the hospital. 107 AM Brent Spiner. Oh, no. 107 AM Gale. He's at Compton. He said it was a kid. 107 AM Brent Spiner. Of course. I told him not to ride his bike at night there. 109 AM Gale. How long did it take you to physically heal from the September 1992 rape? 109 AM Brent Spiner. About a month. 109 AM call from Brent Spiner. 109 AM Brent Spiner. There you are.